I went into the service because I was a juvenile delinquent, uh, getting in trouble, and the uh, the judge down there, the juvenile court judge, and actually at that time it was a circuit judge, uh, called me in and says, you know, you really need to have a change in life. So he said, you need to go into service. So I said, well, let me go down and take the test and see how it goes. So I went down and took the test for the Marine Corps. Uh, and part of that reason, I just knew I wanted to be a Marine. That was as opposed to any other service. And I passed the test, and uh, and then that was in court in the first part of January of 64. And the second tour, I was an infantry platoon sergeant. And at that time, we had two Marine divisions when I went over in, in 69. Uh, and shortly after I got there, they moved one division out. And we covered the area from then on. And as a platoon sergeant, we were out in an area called Arizona Country. And that was nicknamed because it was a hot area. And we were in there, we were getting hit two or three times a day uh, in Arizona Country, and particularly a small company of Marines. You know, we were running about 127 strength. And as a platoon sergeant, uh, we had gotten engaged uh, on that particular day, and August 2nd actually was, that we got engaged with a large group of North Vietnamese Army guys. And uh, so as I'm directing my platoon, because I had no platoon commander, I'm directing my platoon from left to right of bunks, all that firing and everything. And when I heard that, uh, I heard somebody say, rockets. And as I turned back around to face the front, as I was yelling to the right, uh, a rocket was inbound right there and landed beside my foot. And it, it blew me up, I think, fortunately for me, from what I gathered from later on, because it landed so close to my foot that it blew me out that way. So the majority, it only caught me on my right side from my waist up. And it, of course, it blinded my right eye and tore up my shoulder. Uh, so I don't have a use of my right arm. and. Uh, and I stayed in the hospital for about, uh, I think it was some around 15, 16 months before I was released. And so when I got, got out, my lung was hit and everything was hit on that right side, so it was pretty bad on that side. But the majority of us uh, knew that we depended on each other so much. And that Purple Heart is, is a, a medal of honor uh, and valor because it, when you're out there, it represents so much. You know, people get bronze stars, silver stars, Medal of Honors, and things of that nature. But the Purple Heart, where you've actually shed your blood, you've actually been wounded, and you're not going to be the same as you were before. I think that what it, one of the things that does hit home to, I think, every veteran that was over there is that there's nothing you can't do. You know, the worst thing anybody can ever tell you is that, no, you won't be able to do that, or you can't do that. Well. That ain't the way we're fit. Coming back from combat, you could do anything. You went against the most impossible situations. I think it was service service really turned my life around. Uh, it it one of the key things is discipline. Uh, it and it gave you self initiative. You knew you could do things that you never thought about you could do before. Uh, you had a lot of personal drive inside of you. Uh, the, the service turned my life around altogether. It made me 180. Uh, and I, I would tell anybody today, I'd recommend anybody go into service. I mean, it was scary. I And this was on my first tour, I was a point man. And I'm the first one walking through and their little paths going through their village. And you can hear them in the village. Their, their hooches are made out of bamboo. And you can hear them, they got a little uh, length lantern or something in there in there and they're and they're sleeping on the ground they, and everything they eat on the ground they sleep on the ground they do everything on the ground they don't have a house and you can hear they're all the Vietnamese language you don't understand a bit of it and you're walking in and you don't know what you are really walking into I think the uh, you would think being wounded was the scariest but it wasn't uh, I think the scariest is you, you were such a brotherhood with your platoon and your people. And as a platoon started the second tour, you know, the scariest part was, am I making the right decisions? 
when I yell at my 30 Marines to move left to right when we're in a firefight? Uh, did I do everything right? Did I, am I where I should be at? Uh, and this is even in the daytime because the maps were kind of outdated. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that, you know, we all learn from each other and one of the things that you would think that when we get hit, the first thing I would call would be a medevac or a fire mission.